rush out to buy? You know, there's that those yeah. writers that when the book comes out, Pratchett, um, Pratchett definitely. Um, Used to be um, Robert Jordan. In fact, there are Wheel of Time books. Uh, this will make people laugh who are Wheel of Time fans. The, I would buy them right when they came out, even if I didn't intend to read them for a while. Oh, dude. Because, I, you know. Who doesn't do that? you got to have them. <laughs> um, but not, not, even with the, oh, I've got to reread this entire series. I mean, Knife of Dreams sat on my shelf for forever because I'm like, oh, I've, I've forgotten so much by now. I'm going to wait until I've got, you know, a year to reread the series to catch up to this. Um, and I know I have friends who are like, yeah, I'm buying every one of them when it comes out, but I won't read them until the series is done. Um, and so definitely Robert Jordan, Terry Pratchett, um, those are my two really rush out and buy right nows. Yeah. Um, the thing is, you know, I tend to, um, as a writer, feel that it's more, I like to read widely and dabble. You know, read what this writer is writing, read what this writer is writing, read what this writer is writer writing, um, so that I have a feel of the field, which means I'm reading a lot of first books or first book of the series or things like that, mm -hmm. um, so that I understand it. Uh, so that doesn't um, encourage the rush out and buy it philosophy, yeah. though I mean the rush out and buy it people are who, who make me able to survive as a writer, so thank you very yeah, much. So rush out um, and buy it. Yeah. Um, but, that's what that's what I generally do because yeah. this is my industry and I want to keep track of what everybody's doing. So in that same kind of vein, um, are there non-genres writers that that you you have to have like um, mystery or or you know romance? You know, or not really. Um, I I tend to read a lot of nonfiction. Um, Mary Roach's new book came out and I'm interested by that. She um, I ha happen to like her books a lot. Um, but I tend to you know eclectic whatever suits my taste. Um, you know. If uh, if a sequel to Les Mis were ever written by um, you know and, and came out, then I would run out and buy that. But you know, he would have to come back from the dead. Um, yeah, yeah, got it. Mm -hmm. um, writing yeah. quirks. I ask uh, everybody I talk to about the writers. Mm -hmm. I know some that they they will procrastinate and they won't finally sit down once the house is clean. Uh -huh. um, I was talking to another writer, and he has this uncanny ability to forecast almost like within a, a ten words the number of words that will be. Um, in the story or novel he's writing. It's okay. almost surreal. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any quirks? Fun quirks? Crazy quirks? Fun, Reveal crazy to quirks. us your quirks. Um, or are you just one of those normal guys uh, who sits down and writes a lot? I open packs of magic cards to motivate myself. Oh, I have. You're yeah. right. I've mm -hmm. seen that on your Facebook. Yeah, I'm a These are I'm rewards. Magic the Gathering, yeah. Um, i found that uh, one of the only things that really works as a reward to motivate myself is, um, is new cards. So I will sometimes, if I'm being slow, I'll be like, all right, pack of cards if I get to this point. Yeah. Uh, stuff like that, I will actually do. That's kind of that's kind of quirky. Um, I don't know, I write in my beanbag chair with my feet up besides my, beside my hearth um, when it's cold enough for that, um, which I wish it were cold enough for that all the time. Um, that's a pretty good quirk. Yeah, I'm not, I'm, not a, I'm not a summer person. Um, I'm, a, I'm a winter person. That's so. good, because you live in Utah. Mm -hmm. Nice, cold, deep winters. Yep, yeah. All so. right. Um, so thinking, and this, we're talking about kind of some of your tastes, mm -hmm. is there a book that you read and was just so impactful, you're like, man, I wish I would written that book? Um, lots of them. Lots, lots of, and lots Give me of a them. couple. That um, I read Watchmen about two or three years ago and thought, wow, this is mind-blowing. I don't know that I wish I'd written it because I don't think I could have. Yeah. Um, but um, certainly there were some things that um, Rothfuss was doing in Name of the Wind that I thought, oh, man. I wish I had done that. Um, I, the very first one of these I can remember is Jurassic Park. When I read that just as a teenager, I'm like, yeah. dang, that was a genius idea. Cloning dinosaurs out of you know, DNA from, um, from mosquitoes? I wish I'd thought of that. Because yeah. that's an idea that makes a story just by itself. Yeah. And occasionally you run across one of those ideas that you're like, wow, that's just that's an idea and a half. I wish I'd come up with them. Yeah, I'm the same way with ideas. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the execution too. I, I'm yeah. a big fan of Rothfuss. Mm -hmm. uh, there's sometimes you're just like that idea feels like I could have had that. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. um, I asked you this question in mail. We started this interview in uh -huh. mail, um, so I'm going to hit it again here. Um, I had a conversation once with with David Morrell, and we were talking about the degree to which all writing, fiction writing, has a. a a bit of autobiography in it. Not that you see it at the time, but a lot of times you'll look, you'll back, look back and see. Mm -hmm. Do you find that true at all in your work? Oh yeah, certainly. Um, and I can't just point fingers at it um, because there's it, it's all autobiography. I autobiographical. Mm -hmm. It's all in there. 
and the only place this comes from is my head and so it's going to be influenced directly by what's happening around me and you know my children's books the um, Alcatraz books since they tend to editorialize in fact there's a little editorial at the beginning of every chapter in those that are supposed to be little funny editorials you will find autobiographical sketches in those very frequently um, mm -hmm. so when I'm allowed when I go into the first person and I editorialize it happens a lot more often so um, I always ask this because I'm a musician mm -hmm. um, when you write, there are famous writers who listen to music as they write. Yeah. You one of those kind of writers? I do. I do yeah. listen to music. Right now I have a Pandora station um, that's just, um, boy, what's it set to? It's set to some George Winston to give some just background stuff. It's that's not awesome. like George Winston is my favorite, but it works really well. It's good background. With some, um, with some classical. Um, and then, because I couldn't help myself, some Tangerine Dream, um, which it, you know can actually be pretty good um, backgroundy stuff. Um, if I consciously listen to things I really like, uh, I really like Metallica. Um, I really like um, Daft Punk. Lately, I've been into Daft Punk a bit. Um, you know, Europop stuff. Eiffel 65. Um, I have a few of their albums. Um, you know, uh, those are good. Stuff, uh, yeah. yeah, that was actually my next question. Is mm -hmm. like when you get to put it on in the car. So yeah, um, yeah. Oh, th those aren't those are those aren't car music. Oh, okay. So talk to me about the car. Car music, car music is Deep Purple. Okay. Um, awesome. Is uh, who else is good car music? Metallica, if it's the right album, is good car music, but it depends on the depends on the album. So I which mean, one? Which what's one that? Um, S and M, probably. Okay. Um, because I love the I love the Michael Kamen instruments um, in it. I don't know if you've heard it. Yeah, but, I have. Um, it's it's a beautiful album. But of course, then the Black Album. You know, you, you just can fall back How on the Black Album. Yeah. Um, so what else? Uh, Rammstein is really great car music. I could not write to Rammstein. Um, and I'm glad I don't know what they're saying um, <laughs> because I don't speak German. So I just pretend that they're singing about cool, epic fantasy and science fiction stuff, and I leave it at that. I know some Germans. Uh, I'm gonna have to go ask them what they're saying. No, no, don't, don't. <laughs> I won't tell you. You don't want to know. <laughs> you, you know, um, I'm sure he's saying poppies. I like poppies. <laughs> you know. Um, Maybe something about love balloons. Yeah, yeah. yeah you know. If I knew what um, Rammstein was saying, I probably couldn't listen to it, but. What about your uh, best concert you've ever been to? Uh, best concert? I am not a concert goer. Really? Um, I can't appreciate the music even with earplugs, I found. Um, and so I don't go too to loud? concerts. Too loud? Too many people jostling me. Yeah. Too many people around being, being you know, suffocating and stuff. So, so worst so, concert you've ever been to? Um, <laughs> oh, worst? I've got a great story for worst. Um, you know, my, some of my friends... Um, you know, we liked hard rock, and they liked hard rock, and they convinced me to go to a Winger concert. Mm. Um, and this is, you know, Winger is like, was like the lamest hard rock band ever. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, you know, it's like the next year I saw, I realized on Beavis and Butthead, you know, you've got Beavis and Butthead, and they have their cool shirts. And then the dork next door who doesn't really get it, he wears a Winger shirt. That's right. And so that's what we <laughs> went to. Um, and I'm like, why am I at this concert? I don't even like this band. And it was also the loud and the, you know, the suffocating and stuff like that. Um, and mm. so, you know, I, I do go, I do like symphonies and things like that. That doesn't really count, but I, I really oh, sure do like going to see the symphony. Yeah. I mean, um, you know, going anytime I can go, just listen to some classical, um, close my eyes, hear it live, perform live is different. It just yeah, is. Yeah, for sure. Um, and bring my notebook along for ideas. Um, I saw the Beach Boys once. It was actually a fun concert. Um, but, you know, normally I'm just not a concert goer. Plus, all the traffic getting in and out. Yeah. I'll just buy the live album when they buzz out everybody's um, screaming. Um, yeah. and, and that works for me. I can pretend I'm there. Tell me, um, this is kind of an esoteric question. If you could be a character in one of the novels that you have written, <laughs> who would it be? I don't really... I. Wouldn't want to be one of the characters? You know, um, well, I suppose if I could be one of the characters, which means you're at the top of the echelon, um, I wouldn't mind that. But, you know, I really like the internet. And I write fantasy books where there isn't, aren't things like that. Sure, we've got magic and, you know, cool swords and stuff, but I kind of like my life. Yeah. Um, I like, you know, I like uh, being married to whom I'm married. I like living in the place that I live. Yeah. Um, I like being a writer. And none of the people in my books are writers. Um, so, you know, yeah. You're satisfied. I'm satisfied. Yeah. Um, you, you aren't going to find, um, by the strictest definition of the word, word um, um, Mary Sue's in my books because I don't, you know, I love telling these stories. These stories are awesome. Yeah. But I don't want to be these people. I want to be me. Yeah. 
It's funny, I, I read a Clive Cussler book. Uh -huh. He actually yeah, shows up he in shows the book. up in all of his books. That yeah. was really interesting. Yeah, it, it's actually pretty cool. <laughs> Um, it's much he less... saved the day in the one that I oh yeah Mahal Rising okay he's a very yeah. heroic where um, it's it's much less surreal than when Stephen King showed up in his um, yeah but anyway um, what's the one thing that a piece of advice you'd give to an aspiring writer like what's the the simplest thing that they may overlook that might best or most impact their success um, I say this a lot but it's that writing is um, writing takes practice and sure you say that and everyone's like oh yeah I know that but what they don't realize, at least it seems like people don't get, and I didn't get, is that when um, when you start playing the piano, say you want to go learn an instrument, and you want to play the piano, you don't anticipate sitting down and being great at it. And yet, most people I've talked to are new authors, anticipate their first book to be great, to be great and to yeah. sell it, um, which is kind of like expecting that you're when you're practicing your skills on the piano, you're going to record that and sell that as your demo tape, you know, mm -hmm. send that out. I mean, um, don't be afraid to treat it as practice, to explore, to experiment, to throw it away. Um, and I maybe that won't work for most people, but for me, knowing that I was just gonna toss this afterward was very helpful. Yeah, I, you know, that's the thing that I found to be the biggest key is that the words aren't holy. It's yeah. okay to throw away and do it yeah. again. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm a Magic the Gathering virgin. Okay. I never played. Okay. Um, but I was so I was uh, someone. Keith Johnson actually told me yeah. to ask you what color you play. I play blue, blue white. What does that mean? Um, blue is the tricky color, and white is the color of honor and um, and and lawfulness. And okay. so it's kind of like it's like um, being uh, it's I don't know. Um, We'll talk about that yeah. later. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm really interested because I've been following how you yeah. use that as motivation. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, Magic is a, is a Seattle company. Yes, We're it really is. Really close. Yep. I yep. suspect you're going to get some decks tonight. Last question, um, and this is kind of a you know interview yourself question. Uh -huh. And so maybe there's no answer for this one, but is there is there a question that you've never been asked to which you'd love to give an answer? Um, not that I can think of. You probably mean, been one. asked. Yeah, I get death. asked a lot of questions. Yeah. Um, so. No, that there's not not really one there that I just like. Why won't people ask me this question? Because I will just ask it of myself and answer it on my blog. It's what I do when That's things right. occur to me. So, which by the way, um, I wanted to encourage folks who who aren't already doing it to visit. Mm -hmm. You have a Thank very you. robust web presence. Um, you're really great about offering a lot of insight into your work. Thanks. Um, and it's helpful to writers, and I think it's great for fans. There is um, there is also the free book for download on my website, Warbreaker, um, the right. one I released last summer. Uh, free PDF download yeah uh, just to give me a try you should go out and absolutely do that um, so Brandon thank you, oh, thank uh, you for Peter. the time mm -hmm. and um, I hope y'all enjoyed this mm -hmm. and we'll see you soon